What's going on guys, Jeff here for Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to be taking a look at culturing phytoplankton. Welcome back to Mad Hatter's Reef and this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. Now today we're going to be talking about a topic that I haven't actually touched on in a very, very long time and that is culturing phytoplankton. And the reason that we are diving back into culturing phytoplankton is I actually want to start culturing live foods again. So phytoplankton plays a absolute huge role in that. We're going to start with the very basics and eventually we're going to make our way into some copepods and other aspects of aquaculture. So we're going to start with phytoplankton today. So let's jump into it. All right. So what we're going to be doing today is kind of uh, jumping back into something that I used to do quite a bit of. And what I want to do is I want to get back into culturing phytoplankton. Um, this is live phytoplankton. And the benefit of this stuff is it is basically the base of the food chain. What I have here is some items that are going to help uh, culture phytoplankton. And what I would like to do with this stuff is eventually get to a place where um, culturing uh, rotifers again, as well as copepods and I want to use phytoplankton as a food for those uh, creatures. The benefit of this stuff is it's relatively easy to culture for the most part. Uh, the biggest thing is keeping it clean and having sterile um, vessels and then sterile utensils because uh, if bacteria gets in here and it builds up it can actually uh, your culture can crash. Another aspect of this too is when you start getting into copepods and rotifers and all that stuff. You don't want them anywhere near your culture of phytoplankton uh, because one way or another, one little drop of rotifers get into your phytoplankton culture and they're gonna wipe it out. So um, the biggest thing about culturing is one, keeping it sterile. So alcohol is going to help a lot. Uh, currently, I don't have any which is a little bit of a problem. With the current times, people are getting kind of crazy about uh, stockpile and even in my part of the world. And um, probably alcohol is not readily available. And I don't have any on hand. So I went ahead and got these jugs. Uh, they were like uh, lemonade or something. Emptied them out and sterilized the vessels, which is, that's what we're gonna call this, is a vessel with hot water. Um, since I don't have any rubbing alcohol on hand, but that would be uh, the second best way to go ahead and sterilize that. But what we're going to do is take these two cultures of phytoplankton, we're going to put them into these jugs. Before that, we're going to put salt water and the food for the phytoplankton, which is this stuff right here. This is F2, and it's a laboratory grade fertilizer for phytoplankton. It's going to give them the food that they need to you know continue to multiply and fill up this vessel because even though this is really dark which i was a little rough with that um, this is really dark i've had this in my fridge for about a week and a half and i'm very impressed that it's still that dark but once we put it into this vessel uh, with fresh salt water and a little bit of f2 um, it's gonna be like a very light green mint green color and then we're gonna give it about a week and then the population as long as everything goes as it should the population in this vessel uh, will darken up like this and then we're able to harvest split usually splitting is pretty important actually there's a little bit of maintenance involved with this because uh, you have to remove so much of the culture every week and then put in new salt water more f2 so you can continue to repeat the process and part of growing the phytoplankton you get these vessels um, maybe we'll have you know four or five two liter bottles here filled up with phytoplankton and then we'll start getting into the rotifers and we'll start working on the copepods and uh, start getting some nice live food for our, our reef tank. Um, another thing that it isn't necessary but I like to use it is this rigid airline tubing. Um, I got this at Petco. Take a couple lengths of rigid airline tubing and uh, clean it up a little bit. We're going to cut it to the length of the two liter 
uh, just so it's just sitting off the bottom because what will end up happening with phytoplankton is as if it were to be left alone uh, all these cells will start to settle the cells if they're not disturbed which just inverting the bottle like this is enough to disturb it um, all the cells will start to settle towards the bottom and it actually it almost would look like the phytoplankton has died and it will die if you leave it sitting on the bottom because the cells will crush itself um, bacteria will start to grow and it will wipe out the culture so it's very important to make sure that there's motion going on well what we're going to use for motion is air and we're going to use this airline tubing um, the rigid airline tubing then we've got some old school airline tubing we're going to get an air pump uh, and start pushing air to this once we have the salt water the phytoplankton and the f2 in this container uh, we're going to drill a quick little hole into this cap insert the rigid airline tubing just so it's just sitting off the bottom and then put the air to it and it'll bubble the important thing is to make sure that the the air has a way to leave this cap because if you don't do that one or two things is going to happen either you're going to burn out your air pump and the water the bubbles will actually stop they'll become pressurized or you're going to burst this bottle and you're going to get a mess everywhere and depending on where you're doing it um, somebody might not be happy about that so it's very important to make sure that there's a way for air to leave the vessel once you start this um, start the air pump and this is a pretty low-tech way of culturing phytoplankton there's a number of different ways to do it and there's definitely um, some more you know high-tech uh, nice equipment ways to culture phytoplankton but this is going to be kind of a quick and dirty way to culture we got rigid airline tubing we got airline tubing we got an air pump we got phytoplankton starter cultures we got vessels to split the culture into we got f2 um, you don't have to get f2 you actually uh, i believe fritz aquatics makes a product now uh, for culturing phytoplankton um, talked about the air pump and then you need a light so years pass what i've done when i've cultured phytoplankton is i'd buy a shop light and i would buy those old school shop light that has a little pull cord on it um, I think most of the time it was like a T5, no it wasn't a T5, it was like a T, T10 or T12, maybe even a T8. I, don't, I, I think I've used a number of different lights over the years. And ultimately what I would do is I'd just take that shop light and put a daylight bulb in it. Uh, daylight is 6500 Kelvin and run it 24 hours a day. This is a little bit more expensive than the shop lights because the shop light nowadays is going to run you... 20 bucks to get the daylight bulb replacements for it you're gonna run like another 10 to 12 bucks there so it was about 30 bucks uh, this guy cost me 39 dollars at the uh, the big box hardware store and it's meant for growing um, plants indoors so uh, it's a full spectrum light it's not one of those crazy red lights that they got what i liked about this one um, is i wasn't going to need the t5 bulbs uh, it can run for 25,000 hours is the life expectancy of it and then you have the ability to uh, daisy chain uh, the light so if I wanted to like this light setup I think is 24 inches so that would give me quite a few vessels of the two liters you're talking one two three four maybe five um, two liters in front of that I think what I eventually will do is I'll do one in the front and one in the back um, and then daisy chain the two of them together see if i can pull that off so i'm kind of sandwiching the phytoplankton in between and see how that works but for now i think uh, just having one is going to do the trick 40 bucks for a light that's kind of expensive but um, i wanted to try it out so it was like ten dollars more than what i would have spent if i bought one of the shop lights that they had at the store so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go and get some pre-mixed salt water we're going to go ahead and add that to these then we're going to add the f2 to try to do this without making a mess i got a dollar store funnel uh, that i use for my magnesium and calcium and alkalinity hopefully that doesn't mess anything up uh, but I'm going to use that funnel to add the water to the 2 liter. 
so I'm not making a complete mess. Hey, look at me making a complete mess. Air needs to escape. Alright, so I'm not going to completely fill these up uh, between what is in that, which I think is about 16 ounces, and what I get it, got in there. I don't want to cut this um, too thin. I want there to be a, a fairly dense population of phytoplankton um, in there. And typically, I won't even go this far into the process i actually would just try to double what i have with a very similar size bottle i'd basically cut this in half have another bottle cut that one in half have another bottle so i'd have four bottles and then go from there and then work my way up to the two liters uh, but i'm going to go ahead and try it out this way just to see how well it works and something um, that i think that's important to mention here is that you don't want to use salt water from your aquarium you don't want to use water from any system uh, that is holding you know any type of life whatsoever you want sterile salt water to start your culture because if there was any type of life form uh, that potentially could consume phytoplankton uh, that would definitely you know cause problems you want nothing but salt water it's a very controlled environment so what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna put these off to the side because I've already said once I don't want to make a mess and I've made a mess put those back there now we're just gonna drill a quick hole into this cap all right so just enough to get that rigid airline tubing down through there that's all I'm looking for and we're gonna do the same with this other cap there we go again we're good to go I'm just gonna put another quick hole actually just because I want that air to be able to escape I'm gonna put that bit right into my hand all right what i'm going to do now is we're going to take the f2 i'm going to put a little bit more f2 than i normally would just to kind of supercharge this phytoplankton a little bit uh, typical dosage is uh, two milliliters per four liters of f2 i've always kind of have overdone it especially when i'm starting a culture because i really want it to be successful at missing something. All right. uh, directions on the F2. Shake it very well before use. What I just put in there was enough for a two liter. Basically one milliliter to two liters. One milliliter to a two liter. Struggle busting. All right, so I got my funnel. Now we're gonna pour the phytoplankton in. I'm actually pretty, pretty happy with that. Plenty. That is plenty. You can go ahead and cut that again. It's really good culture. I'm pretty impressed with it. When I'm splitting cultures, um, this one didn't have like a ton of crap sitting on the bottom, which again, I was pretty impressed with uh, what I got there for a starter culture. Um, but like, even with these two liters, because it's not completely flat on the bottom, um, or it's not like a cone shape, which would actually a two liter upside down would be the perfect. Um, shape for culturing phytoplankton because there would be no dead spots where the the cells could kind of build up but eventually what will end up happening is there'll be um, a little bit of die off in those little collection pots right there and typically when i go to cut um, phytoplankton i won't pour that bottom portion or that sediment that kind of builds up on the bottom into the next bottle i want to keep that kind of clean um, and then just keep moving forward as i'm building building up the uh the culture pretty happy with how dark that is don't feel bad about putting them in the two liters at all uh now we're gonna go ahead and put in our airline tubing which i'm gonna go ahead and poke that right on the bottom i want it free floating on the bottom there you go sent it and 
do it again. Outside of um, the airline itself and the air pump, we're gonna go ahead, set this stuff aside and take a look at this light real quick. There really isn't a whole lot to that. Um, and for the price, feels pretty cheap. It's just a strip of LED lights. I like that you got the switch, you got a good amount of cord there, and you got full spectrum light. The other portion I really like about it is that it can almost be freestanding. Uh, so you have, I may need to prop it up a little bit just because I want the whole container to be able to get hit, but you could have a whole roll, at least another too easy, maybe with some separation so you can get some reflection going in there, but it's a good amount of phytoplankton just off that one light. All right guys, so here is the phytoplankton all set up. We got the bubbles going to it, and I forgot to mention that a valve is pretty important with uh, controlling the airflow going to the phytoplankton. So uh, you want that to have like a slow boil going on. You definitely don't want to pound that with a bunch of air, but pretty happy with the light, light solid. And uh, we're gonna let this chill for about seven to 10 days, and then we're gonna go ahead and split it, get some more two liter bottles. Hopefully I can get some rubbing alcohol so I can properly sterilize some stuff. But this is it guys, this is all you need to do to culture phytoplankton and start getting into agriculture so and we'll keep you guys posted on any updates see how this culture turns out all right folks that's going to do it for today's video i want to thank you for joining me if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that i upload a new video i hope you enjoyed this one if you did hit the thumbs up and i'll see you next week right here with a brand new video